Okay, so that looks like the right combo. And now we can see that what they were saying was different parts of a rhyme. It's still not open. However... Okay, so... Their order was that the angry guy spoke first, if I recall. And then the second guy who spoke was this guy on the right. He's the one with the waggly eyebrows. I'm not sure what emotion that's supposed to be. The first guy was obviously anger. Um, maybe this guy was suspicion, I think. Let's see, so it was anger, then suspicion... Laughter was the last one spoke last. Um, I think she was the one who spoke after him. I'm still not sure what her emotion is supposed to be. Maybe worry? She looks a bit worried. You see her expression. Maybe that's, that's what it is. Worry or fear. And then... That must be boredom. <laughs> and then he spoke. He looks like he's surprised. And then I believe Mr. Happy spoke. So hopefully I remembered that correctly. If not, we'll find out pretty soon. Because now that we have that combination, we can go back to the bell tower. Nope, that's not the way to the bell tower. Come on, Vexus. Get it together. Okay, this is the bell tower. Okay. Now, um, and of course the clue that, the, that their order of speech is the right combo is because you can see here the seventh bell ends with the smile emotion. Which is, the, which is also the last of those uh, statues who spoke. So let's see if I got this right. We have anger, suspicion, fear, boredom, uh, surprise, and happiness. Got it. And so that reveals the seventh bell. Since we played six there. So now we're going to ride it up. Whoa, that's really fast on this emulator. <laughs> Let's see if I can do it. Ah, yeah. Oh man, this is gonna take some luck here. There we go. <laughs> oh man. See, uh, in, in the when the game runs on the original hardware, that that trip up is really slow, so that you can click on the window and jump out as the uh, as you get pulled up by the rope. Oh man, that was tricky. Okay. So you probably recognize the sound of that bell. That's the bell that played at the very beginning of the uh, intro to the game when the eclipse was happening. And uh, this is just a nice balcony area, looking at some more of the canyon here. Now, where, where we were um, with the hookah in it was actually, I believe, uh, Brother Malvo's study. This is actually his uh, bedroom. And what I think is kind of strange is that his title is brother, I believe. But for some reason, Dr. Sartorius always calls him father. So I don't know if 
that was a mistake by the game developers, or if at some point he was a brother and then he eventually got uh, promoted to father, which I suppose is possible, since he does seem to be kind of in charge of this place. Another medical book. Last night, I dreamt of a nightmarish ride through the impoverished classes. The dream haunts me. I am dazed by the dirt and sheer noise. My coach tips over and the crowd closes in on me like an egg, crushing me like the grip of the earth. Their spirit burns me like the fire of emotion. Despair fills me, and then air. Sweet, sweet air clears away the crowds. Is this a sign of my fallen state, or simply my work? Um, this actually sounds more like Sartorius than Malvo. So this might actually be one of Sartorius's books. Especially since it does have the medical symbol on it. Some poison there. We have what looks like a symbol of Saturn axe. You can see the planetary symbol right there. A lifetime for some. A lifetime of fashion. Not at this cost. Hell is better. I'll pray. I can still pray for forgiveness. Pardon my sins. Avarice. Sloth. Envy. Lust. Deceit. Something was really playing on the uh, monk's conscience here. Ah, so here we have some flames in a certain order. We have blue, orange, red, some slightly darker orange, and white. I guess that first one actually would be yellow then. Uh, I can't always tell colors very well. I'm not colorblind, but. Still, sometimes I have some trouble. Maybe that was my problem way back in the air puzzle. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see what's in this book. There's Alexandria as a young girl with her violin. And here she is again, maybe a little bit older. Maj 15th, 925. Dear Malvo, as we discussed, I will bring her to you one week after birth. Do not underestimate the importance of your task. Her spiritual progress and the purification of her soul is essential to the process. She will be a gift to all mankind. Dr. Sartorius. So it looks like, as we suspected earlier, that uh, Alexandria formed some vital piece of Malvo and Sartorius's plan to gain immortality. Malvo and Alexandria. Father Malvo, I was much moved by your tale of the orphan child. As a result, in a spirit of goodwill, I have agreed to grant your request. You may take this baby and raise her until she reaches maturity. Yurik be with you, the Grand Inquisitor. Alright, so it looks like she was in fact adopted. And it looks like it was Sartorius who actually brought uh, her as a child to Malvo to raise as his daughter. 
Okay, uh, another picture of Alexandria with her violin, and Estuary, 16th, 935. Dearest Malvo, I am delighted by Alexandria's progress. I think that your use of puzzles to sharpen her mind and spirit is working beautifully, and already I can see promise in her music. I will be saving a seat for her in the conservatory. Yours truly, Sophia. Okay. And we know from the one of the flashbacks that uh, at a relatively young age she was sent off to the conservatory to learn the music of the spheres, whatever that was. Um, of course, that's, that's a reference to the old, uh, I believe, uh, Greek model of the solar system where every single planet was residing in a different uh, crystalline sphere above the Earth, or around the Earth, I should say, back when they thought the Earth was at the center of the solar system. Okay, uh, there's Alexandria here, front and center. I'm assuming that these must all be girls from the conservatory that they're talking about. Dear Father, uh, I'm sorry, Augur 5th, 942. Dear Father, I miss you. Madame Sophia seems to be paying much attention to me. She believes that in my soul I possess the very power of music, and with practice I will find the precious notes which are the harmony of the spheres. I'm not so sure. Everyone believes my music is strange. Do you think me strange? I know I... I know I am lonely. I know I'm lonely. That's written a bit strangely. Always missing you, Alexandria. And let's see, okay, this is... Is that Alexandria or is that Sophia? I think that's Sophia, actually. Um, but this letter is from Alexandria. Maj 1st, 943. Dear Father, I've met someone and for the first time in months I feel optimistic. His name is Lucian Kane, and he is the one person who seems to understand my music. When around him, I don't have to apologize for who I am or what I believe. I finally found my kindred spirit, as you, almost, as you always promised I would. Be happy for me. Your Alexandria. Let's see. Maje 22nd. 9.45. Father. <clears throat> Excuse me. There is something strange going on, and I have to get out of here. Lucian wants to marry me. We will come to you at the next full moon. Marry us and give us your blessing for the future. I know your concern for purity of the spirit, but remember, not all of us are destined to marry Yurik and live in a monastery. A. And so this must have been just before that uh, ceremony we saw in the flashback. And that's the end of the letters. Again, it's kind of up in the air as to whether Malvo was really going to go through the ceremony or not. This looks like one of the old pull the books out and the thing moves trick. Ah, yes. Ah, and here we are, right back um, where we started. So this indeed was a passageway, but we ended up first going through it the other way. I want to make sure I got everything in that last room, so let's go back really quick. <coughs> Excuse me. That the main door is locked. And this is where we were before. Okay, so I think we are in fact done. With all of this. For some reason I have the strange urge to turn one of the candles. I think it's just because we just saw uh, uh, one cliche secret passage, so now I'm thinking there might be another one. Ah, we didn't look here. Let's see what this is. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, we can't pick this up, but we can put something here. And you can see that this picture looks kind of blurry. So let's put the uh, clarifying mirror on it. And have a look. Ah, and
And so here we see the positions of the skulls. So the far left is facing forward. The second one is facing all the way to the left. The third is facing partially to the right. The uh, next one looks like partially to the left, and the other one to the far right. So we note that combination. Now let's go back to the skulls. And I believe this is the only way that you can get back here, because you I don't think you can ride the... Uh, um, the bell back down. So you have to go that way. Through the secret passage. Okay. Back through the museum. passage. Oh man, those groove sounds just ugh, creep me out. Alright, let's see. So that's just facing forward. Next one is far left, slightly to the right, slightly to the left, all the way to the right. Bingo. Ah, so the wall opened behind us. Okay, and f here we finally make it. So basically, um, for each of the four areas we're going to go to, the final room is basically uh, uh, the factory room, or the chemical lab, the alchemical lab. And so what we need to do is actually create the purified metal. Here we have a key. And here's the drill. Here's a book. Remember that in the poem that we read a while ago, talked about the key that does not open the door. So um, that poem may have been referring to uh, part of the process for making this metal. All right, let's read what we got here. This is the work of the alchemy. Oh boy, it's all in the <laughs> semi-old-fashioned spelling, I guess. Let's see if I don't screw this up. This is the work of the alchemist earth and air, fire and water, the endless battling of elements, fixed and volatile, yet not the one can exist without the other three held fast. So must it be with the great eclipse, when the moon holds the sun fixed, and the two warring rulers of the cosmos marry in conjoined harmony, male to female, gold to silver, king to queen, and the quintessence governs all. Okay. Let's go ahead and leave that open. Ah, it's not going to let us. Fine. So we can pick up the key, and we can pick up, it almost looks like a drill bit. So, let's see, basically you have to do a little bit of uh, trial and error to get this thing going. I believe the key goes there. Actually, I think, I, do I need to turn it? Yes. Okay. Then we open this up. Okay, put the little piece of metal in there. And that grinds it into a very smooth sphere. And I believe we need to turn that on, and that's going to basically provide heat by uh, pouring lava through these pipes. I'm not quite sure how that's supposed to work, but essentially that's what it's for. I think, believe that we put the sphere here. Ah, 
Ah, okay. So, put in boiling water, made it nice and polished. Now, I think the flames are the last piece. So, what we want to do, I believe, is to copy the order of the flames that we saw in the room. So, we need blue, yellow, red, orange, and white. Let's see if that works. So it goes through the lion's head, gets melted by the various uh, amounts of heat, then we blow it dry. Nope, that, that wasn't it. We end up with just the same piece of metal again, so we need to do it again. Fortunately, it doesn't have it so that the game becomes unwinnable if you fail. Try again. In there. Okay, so this time I'm going to save my game just before I put it through here so that I don't have to go through that whole process again. Okay, save. Oops. Save. You can't save on a zoom-in screen. I'm not sure why, that's just the way the game is. Alright. Oh, maybe because I thought that was white, but it turned out it was yellow. Let's have a look at these flames again. Oh, maybe that purple, what looked kind of purple to me, was actually white. So let's try that again. Okay, let's try that one. Like I said, I'm terrible with colors. There we go. So we finally have the purified metal here. Uh, it looks like gold, although I can't actually remember which one we were crafting. But uh, you can see it's in the shape of, it's in the shape of Saturn. So this is the right metal to have. and it's ready for us to put back in its place. Ugh, looks like it filled up with blood. And so we see Malvo's death. And now it looks like we can talk to him again. Ah, bless you. Your wanderings in my world have stirred many memories. You must understand, we meant no harm. Alexandria was my child. I thought I was saving her from Lucienne and from a hasty marriage, protecting her destiny. But I couldn't protect her from the nemesis. He was obsessed 
with our knowledge. I now know I was wrong, but I never got to tell her. I never got to say goodbye. Surely this must be hell. There is a way to bring them back, but we need the four metals. Please, let me have one last chance. Okay. So, um, I guess that answers that question. He actually must have called the general to uh, break up the wedding. He, he never really had an intention of marrying the two of them. Um, but he claims that he was doing it for her own good. So, uh, as we go to the three other worlds, we will get more clues about what really happened and the sequence of events. But I think that'll end my recording session for today. So, until next time, fellow adventurers, this is Vexus.